Ever wondered when the first sounds traveled through the airwaves and into our homes? It all began with the genius of Guglielmo Marconi towards the end of the 19th century. This Italian inventor's fascination with electromagnetic waves led to a breakthrough that would revolutionize communication forever. Marconi's pivotal moment came in the year 1901, when he achieved the first successful transatlantic radio transmission. Imagine that for a moment. A message sent without wires, traveling over 2,000 miles across the vast Atlantic Ocean. This was a feat that many thought impossible, yet Marconi had done it, using a simple Morse code signal, the letter S. This marked the dawn of radio, a technology that would soon permeate every corner of our lives, from entertainment to emergency broadcasts. It was a new era of communication, a thrilling leap into the unknown. This invention opened up a world of possibilities, leading to numerous defining moments in radio history. But when was the first time a human voice was broadcasted over the airwaves? A question that takes us back to a crisp Christmas Eve in the year 1906. It was the night Reginald Fessenden, a Canadian-born inventor, made history. Fessenden wasn't just sending out beeps or Morse code, which was common at the time. No, he had something much more ambitious in mind. He transmitted the first radio program to be ever broadcasted to a general audience. Imagine the surprise and sheer wonder of the wireless operators aboard ships and at coastal stations when they heard, not the expected coded beeps, but a human voice. Fessenden recited a passage from the Bible, played a short violin solo, and wished his listeners a Merry Christmas. That first broadcast was more than a novel Christmas greeting. It was a groundbreaking moment, a game changer. This broadcast set the stage for radio to become a major source of entertainment and information. What if I told you that radio was once the king of home entertainment? Imagine a time when the flickering screen of a television was non-existent, and instead, the family gathered around a large wooden box, the radio. This was the golden age of radio, spanning from the 1920s to the 1940s. During this time, the radio was the primary source of entertainment and information. People huddled around it to listen to the news of the day, to enjoy thrilling dramas, to laugh at comedy shows, and to marvel at the wonders of the world. It was a time when the voices of radio personalities were as familiar as those of family members. From the suspenseful tales of The Shadow to the comedic antics of the Jack Benny program, the radio offered something for everyone. This era truly solidified radio's place in the heart of American culture. Did you know there was a time when all radio was AM? It's hard to imagine, isn't it? But let's journey back to the 1930s, an era of innovation and curiosity. During this time, a man named Edwin Howard Armstrong was hard at work, tinkering and experimenting. His goal? To improve radio technology. Armstrong was not satisfied with the static-filled and often unclear broadcasts of AM radio. He dreamed of a better way to transmit sound. He envisioned a future where music and voices could be heard as clearly as if they were in the same room. And from this dream, frequency modulation, or FM radio, was born. FM radio was a game-changer. It provided a clearer, static-free signal, revolutionizing radio broadcasts. Suddenly, music was clearer, voices were crisper, and the listening experience was transformed. Armstrong's invention offered a new level of quality to radio broadcasts. This innovation brought a new level of quality to radio broadcasts, revolutionizing the way we listen to music. Can you imagine a time when radio was the main source of war news? Picture it, World War II was raging globally, and radio was the lifeline that connected homes to the front lines. It was the war years, a time of uncertainty and fear, yet radio served as a beacon of hope and resilience. Every day, families huddled around their radios, ears tuned to the latest updates from the war front. Radio reporters risked their lives to bring these stories home, creating a bridge between the battlefields and living rooms. Simultaneously, radio did not forget its role in entertainment. It offered solace and distraction with music, dramas, and comedy shows, providing a much-needed respite from the grim reality of war. From updates, entertainment, to morale-boosting messages, radio served a multifaceted role. It was not just a box spewing out sounds, it was a companion, a friend, a source of comfort. During these years, radio proved itself to be more than just entertainment. It was a lifeline. How did radio help shape the music we listen to today? Picture the 1950s, a time of change and evolution in the music industry. The radio was not just a medium for news or soap operas anymore. It became a platform for something new, something different. Rock and roll. 
This was the era when the airwaves started humming with a fresh, rebellious sound that would soon sweep the nation. DJs, like the legendary Alan Freed, played a pivotal role in this seismic shift. They were the torchbearers introducing this electrifying genre to the masses. Freed in particular was known for his passion for the music, spinning records that got people up and dancing, shaking up the status quo. Radio thus became the springboard for rock and roll, catapulting it into mainstream consciousness. It gave this new genre a voice, allowing it to roar and resonate across homes, cities, and eventually, the world. Radio was instrumental in shaping our modern music landscape. Remember the time when radios were bulky and expensive? Picture this. It's the 1950s, and a revolution in radio technology is about to take place. Enter the transistor radio, a device that would change the face of the radio industry forever. Before the advent of transistor radios, listening to your favorite radio show or music meant being tied to a large, costly, and stationary device. But transistor radios, with their small size and affordability, were about to turn the tables. These portable gadgets were powered by a revolutionary technology, the transistor. This tiny yet powerful component allowed radios to shrink in size, while still delivering a clear and strong signal. Suddenly, radios were no longer a luxury for the few, they became accessible to the many. This shift in technology democratized access to radio. It made listening to radio a personal, portable experience. You could now take your radio along wherever you went and tune in to your favorite shows anytime, anywhere. This was a game changer, making radio a personal and portable experience. Ever wondered where the concept of Top 40 radio came from? Let's rewind to the 1950s, to a time when radio was the primary medium for music. A man named Todd Storrs, owner of a radio station in Omaha, Nebraska, noticed the repetitive behavior of patrons at his local diner, who continually played the same songs on the jukebox. Inspired, Storrs introduced a new format to his radio station, KOW, playing a rotation of the 40 most popular songs of the time. This was a revolutionary shift from the variety shows and serialized dramas that filled the airwaves. It was a shift towards what we now recognize as modern radio programming. The Top 40 format quickly gained traction. It gave listeners a predictable and enjoyable experience, and it made sure that the most loved songs were always on air. This format remains popular to this day, shaping the way we discover new music. But radio isn't just about music, is it? No, indeed. In the year 1970, a significant shift occurred in the radio landscape with the launch of National Public Radio, or NPR, as it's more commonly known. NPR was, and still is, a non-profit media organization that set out to create a more informed public. It brought to the fore high-quality news and cultural programming, setting itself apart from the cacophony of commercial radio. NPR began with 90 stations, but today, it spans the globe, reaching millions of listeners daily. Its dedication to in-depth storytelling and investigative journalism has made it a trusted source of news for many. But it's not just about news. NPR also offers a rich tapestry of cultural programming, from music to the arts to science and education. It has truly embraced the ethos of public service broadcasting. This marked a new era in radio with a focus on quality over quantity. Radio had evolved, becoming a platform for enlightenment, not just entertainment. What if your radio could talk back to you? Picture this, the 1980s, a decade of big hair, neon colors, and the birth of a new radio format, talk radio. This was no ordinary radio. It was interactive, it was opinionated, and it was unapologetically bold. Talk radio was a breath of fresh air in the broadcasting world. It was more than just a platform for people to air their views. It was a forum for fiery debates, riveting discussions, and a meeting place for like-minded individuals. For the first time, listeners weren't just passive recipients of information. They were contributors, influencers, and active participants in the conversation. The advent of talk radio was a game changer. It shifted the paradigm, blurring the line between broadcaster and listener. In doing so, it transformed the radio from a one-way communication medium to a dynamic two-way interaction platform. Talk radio turned listeners into active participants, changing the dynamics of radio forever. Can you imagine a world without boundaries for radio? As the new millennium dawned, the radio industry was set to undergo one of its most significant transformations. The early 2000s marked the birth of satellite radio, a technology that would forever change the radio landscape. Imagine turning the dial and receiving clear digital broadcasts from coast to coast, no matter where you were in the country. This was the promise of satellite radio. 
pioneered by companies like XM and Sirius, satellite radio offered a wider range of programming than ever before. From exclusive music channels to talk shows, news, and even live sports broadcasts, it was all available nationwide at the touch of a button. Through the power of satellite technology, radio was no longer confined to local airwaves. It had become a national, even global medium. This innovation was a game changer, breaking down geographical barriers and offering listeners an unprecedented level of choice. Satellite radio expanded the horizons of what was possible with radio. What's the latest evolution in the world of radio? Podcasts, the digital offspring of radio, have been captivating audiences worldwide with their charm. Picture it as radio on demand, a treasure trove of audio content at your fingertips. This phenomenon embarked on its journey in the early 21st century, but it was in the mid-tweenies that they really took off, becoming a cultural mainstay. What makes podcasts so alluring? Well, they offer something for everyone. Whether you're a crime story aficionado, a history buff, or a wellness guru, there's a podcast out there just for you. They've transformed how we consume audio content, shifting from a schedule-driven format to an on-demand one. Not to mention, the rise of smartphones and streaming platforms has made accessing these bite-sized audio nuggets easier than ever. Podcasts are the latest chapter in the rich history of radio, and who knows what the future holds? Mm -hmm.